tell you, honestly, I will love it if we beat them. Love it. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Warm Down. Delighted to be joined by my mate Simon, United author and uh, all-round top blog. We've had a couple of good nighters on here before, and uh, we thought it was an opportune moment to get him back in, new season and all the rest of it, and let's have another bit of a natter. So, Jose is getting hammered again. No surprises there. Yeah, um, we spoke about this in the past, Steve. It seems to be the, the media's pet thing at the moment is to hammer United. Th that's nothing new in that, but certainly to hammer... Jose, who was the one time their darling, they have new darlings because they've got the uh, clown performing clown at Anfield in Klopp, who they absolutely love and, and it can do no wrong. And also Pochettino, who seems to be another darling. And then, of course, we have football's messiah over at City and Pep Guardiola, who invented football. And we had the ridiculous situation on Friday night of. Uh, somebody mentioning that we might be, be getting a director of football at United, which is probably a good thing, but they said just like Manchester City, as though yeah, because Manchester City that, were yeah. the first people to have a director of football. Actually, they don't even have a director of football; they have a, a sporting director. If yeah. you want to split airs, and and I do, that's yeah. something I like doing. Yeah. Um, but this is, a, I, I believe, it is a good thing. And if you if you're interested in what a director of football does, then tomorrow or Wednesday I'll be putting a video out on exactly that and what the roles and remit would be at Manchester United. So definitely stay tuned for that one. But uh, what's your thought on it? Do you think that's something that United need? Um, well, I think um, Josie made it quite clear on Friday night. And that's, this is the really, really interesting thing. And this is something that Manchester United fans should be aware of, is that he's not getting to choose who plays for Manchester United, who signs for Manchester United. Which can't be a good thing. That can't be a good thing. And... Because like the thought, the thought of, the thoughts thought of on Jose's style aside, right? He is the football expert at the club in a management position. He yeah. is the football expert at a club. And if you want him to be successful, you have to allow him his vision. If he says, like, I don't like that he plays Ashley Young, I don't like that he re-signed Fellaini, but you've got to go with what he wants to do. And, and I think both of those things are things he wanted to do rather than was forced into. Ed Woodward um, brought in Moyes absolute disaster we're still paying the man money now he's still, he's still got some of his contract left he then came up with the genius idea of bringing in van gaal another absolute disaster and he was in a lot of trouble so he needed someone who was going to actually start winning things and winning things now not in five years time not in time to build he needed a winner and a straight winner so he brought jose in because that's what jose does he wins so the first season he wins us a european trophy uh, and the League Cup. Back in the Champions League. Fantastic. Back in the Champions League. Then the next season, um, we finished second. We're the closest team to City. City had one of those seasons that will never be repeated. And we score enough points that on some seasons we'd actually win. We would have won it. It's a, t it's a title challenge on virtually every season. Uh, it, takes us to, it also takes us to a cup final. And according to the media and an awful lot of Manchester United supporters, He's a failure and, and we don't like it. And I think the thing that worries me massively is uh, this new kind of breed of Manchester United supporters we've got who, who kind of seem to follow United through them, through social media and everything like that and become keyboard warriors who have suddenly decided well, we'd like Klopp or Pochettino to manage us who have won absolutely nothing, you know, and Klopp's a serial failure. Well, that's Klopp's trophy cabinet there. Yeah. Absolute serial, serial failure, but he's, I mean, he's a laugh in front of the, the camera crew, so we all love him. And when you get United fans who, who are saying, you know, we'd rather have him. And to, to, to have the restrictions that Jose obviously has at our club, um, and to do as well as he did last year was, I think, I mean, he came out on, on Friday and said it was one of his proudest achievements, and I totally back him on that. I think it's an incredible achievement to get us to, to where we are. He's what's completely being ignored by the media and a lot of United supporters is that he's building a very young team. All this nonsense or oh, Jose doesn't like doesn't like youth or anything like that. Friday night we had four players who played who were all Manchester United youth products. At one point the whole midfield was from Manchester United youth system. If that had been Klopp, if that had been Pep, if that had been Pochettino, the press would have been wetting themselves, talking about the future of football and someone who delivers it. Jose does it doesn't even get a mention. You know he's uh, developing youth, and I, and I think, I think he's three or four years away from a really, really good team. 
but, it, but he's bringing it through. I think the, the big, big, and it is a massive, massive concern for Manchester United supporters, and they should take it very, very seriously, is the Glazers and, and Woodward, who are now in a position where they were struggling to pay off the debt. The debt, ha debt has to be paid off in dollars, and they're not finding it easy. And the manager was told quite some time ago that he wouldn't be getting the players that he wanted to to get and this is down purely to the Glazers wanting money and they wanting money for themselves because what people forget it doesn't matter where we finish doesn't matter who the manager is the first people who get paid out of Manchester United are the Glazers or oh, the bank it? the bank first and then well, the, no, Glazers. Can't the Glazers take their the Glazers take their, their, well, guess, their wedge yeah. Yeah. you know and, and Woodward gets played and Woodward goes along and he gets his some Russian tractor company to sponsor us or some viral company from China and he, he loves to announce that and, and when he ridiculously stated last year that we can do things in the transfer market that no other club can do. What's maddening, mate, is that there was there was some real talk of a Neymar or a Bale, and you know he finds the money for that because he, he supposedly had a hundred million earmarked for Varane, but wouldn't pay an extra few million like last season for someone like Alderweireld because of no resale value because he doesn't have enough Twitter followers, but he's a player that improves Manchester United. Woodward is a Galacticos chairman that's that's his his dream is the big players are bringing in bringing in them in for the sponsorship deal he was the driving force behind Pogba that wasn't Jose I know people might not like to hear this but uh, Ed Woodward spoke to to Pogba's I mean Pogba was being I think most people know was being touted around Europe by his agent as we see I believe as we see there was now. an interview with someone I can't remember who it was whether it was Raiola or Pogba who kind of let the cat out of the bag that this deal was talked about two years so it was talked about around about 2014 so it might have been yeah. talked about during the changeover of Moyes and Van Gaal yeah, yeah. so this wasn't a, clearly wasn't a Jose Mourinho no, signing it wasn't and, and neither was Sanchez Sanchez came up and the the Sanchez's agent once again spoke to Woodward and you know, I mean, if you're Jose, if you're Jose and you get the opportunity to have Sanchez in your team, you're not going to turn him down. But he is not what what Jose was looking for, and some might say that he kind of unbalanced the side. Uh, I think side. I think he did. I, I so loved I don't it. Think he was a, I don't think it was it was a good sign for, for Jess. I think Jess suffered because of that, and 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 certainly Anthony Marshall. Anthony Marshall's been the main casualty from it, I think. But I like the idea of Sanchez at the time, and it didn't make a whole lot of sense at the time because you had Rashford and Marshall at that, at that period was was swapping over. One starts, the other comes on and scores. That was the game, wasn't it? And, and I think it didn't make a whole lot of sense doing it, except for the fact that when a player like Sanchez comes available, you go, you've got to go and get him. Yeah. But I do agree that there was probably some sort of South American market with its with its eye on to get it, him. It was it, Woodward and Woodward was thinking as he does sponsorship. You know, getting the sponsors in. He likes the big name players. He, you know, that that's who he's after. Um, I think the the big concern is now that he is um, blocking Jose's transfers. And as Jose made quite well, clear, well, he is. And he, he is. It's he not is, a rumor. He is. You know, he is stopping them now. If somebody, if if anybody wants to tell me Ed's qualifications for picking a footballer, I don't know because it's certainly there's nobody else on the board. Um, you know, Sir Alex, God bless him, is. It's a way of recovering. He's on hope, you know, and, uh, and hopefully getting himself better. And that's what you want. You don't want Sir Alex yeah. pouring over transfers. Now he's earned his crust. Exactly. He needs to go and sit and drink as much wine as he wants. And, uh, and so Bobby is, is turning up and, 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 and a bit of a figurehead. Do I think uh, he gets consulted? No, because if, I think if Bobby had been consulted, I don't think Josie would have ever got the uh, job. He's, he's quite you know openly stated that he's no fan. I think for I, I don't think Jose's unveiling having Sir Bobby at Carrington at that time was a coinc uh, was a coincidence yeah. either. Yeah, I don't yeah. imagine he's down there every week. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I think for, for for Manchester United supporters, though, I think it's very very important that we realise, you know, we should we should be getting right behind the manager and giving him all the support we can. We certainly shouldn't be doing the Wood Woodward and, and the Glazers would like nothing better. They really wouldn't. They'd, they'd love it if we turned all our anger onto Jose and oh, it's Jose's fault. This is Jose's fault because it means that they get an easy ride. You know, they manage. They they own the biggest club. They, they own the biggest club in the world, and they are just absolutely bleeding it dry. And people will say, 
I know there'll be people watching now who'll think give it a rest and, and move on but can you imagine can you imagine if we had if we, the Glazers have actually taken more money out of our club than City's owners have put in to give you now, now if you look at when which they puts us on, about three billion a pound oh, in spend. Just, it's, you it's, look at what ours is down and theirs is up. The difference is three billion. You could put three billion in a brand new team you create today and do something with them, as has been proved, as been proved by City. And I'm not here to to slag City off because let's face it, any club in the world, if they were offered the money and the trophies, of would. they would take it. I think what United supporters need to do is get real when you'll hear them say things like, well, if Pep was managing, it would be different. Let's get this, let's get this fact straight. Pep would not manage Manchester United. Do you think that goals. was why? When Because Fergie very publicly went to New York. I'm sure they didn't just discuss the best tapas in New York. Yeah. I'm sure the reason he went over to there was to try and get him. Do you think that the reason Pep Guardiola is at Manchester City now is because Fergie couldn't guarantee him the sort of funds that he I, clearly needs to transform a team? I think it's no coincidence that Fergie, Fergie uh, knew what was happening. He knew what was coming along and he knew that that was a team that needed completely restructuring. Was he going to be given the money for it? I don't think he was. Uh, and I think he got out for that very reason. Um, and then I also don't think it's a coincidence that he brought in a, a manager who was used to working with limited funds in Moyes, who, in Moyes, who wasn't and a Van Gaal is a youth manager. And, and you, both both uh, both p appointments have been people who don't who not who haven't got a track record of spending large amounts of money. This isn't a coincidence. This is a plan by by the owners to to basically they they turn in, they, they own. A brand, and it is a brand, uh, whether you like it or not, because we are now wearing black shorts at just, home. Just don't call it a franchise. But, but, but <laughs> Steve, Steve you're, you're not far off, are you? You know, you're not far off. They're, they are not concerned about... Are they upset whether we win the league? I don't really think so. I think they think, you know, are we, are we making money? You know, do we get our... 12 million or whatever it is that each each well, one takes out every every year the they bottom line rolling. fact is that the the club people keep talking about what manchester united have spent in terms of transfers it's it's about 300 million or so 350 under jose which is a lot of scratch in the grand scheme of things now you're looking at that being essentially three footballers because essentially it is it's you know 80 90 million is on pogba 80 90 million is on lukaku and the rest is on a, an assortment of other footballers yeah. but the glazers have taken over a billion now, if I can give you a billion since 2005 to sprinkle along footballers, can you imagine the position it's, we could be it's in? It's just... It, it, it's beyond, we would that's be on, not asking for external investment. We, that's exactly. just the money the club's already made. The club's made. making itself. We would be on a different league. You know, we, it looked like Germany, probably. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe you know, for... for if we you, we if miss you, out on a title every if, couple if of seasons, be, but most of the time... If you want to be someone who says, well, you know, for the good of football... Yeah. I don't care about the good of football. I care about <laughs> Manchester United. But but if you want to say for the good of football, maybe it's a good thing that that you know they we, we didn't get like that because there was a great danger of us. We would have become too powerful and we were winning every. We, you know we would have won everything. But you know, but it go, would be it would be because we generated the money. Go back I, to Jose a second yeah. because this is a question that I often think about. So Alex loved a ban in the um, <laughs> he did in the press room. Yes. Why? With some of the egregious stories that we see getting printed on a regular basis, not just occasionally, the the clear and obvious agenda against United in the press is disgusting. Yes. Why doesn't Karen Shotbolt or Jose Mourinho just start dishing bands out? Because I know for a fact, now people are going to argue in the comments and they're going to tell me I'm chatting shit, but I know for a fact that if you as a journalist write a negative article about Manchester City, they are on the phone asking you to explain yes. your story. Yeah. Now, you might write one. Yeah. Might get an ear beating. You write two, you get another ear beating. Are you writing three and four and five? Well, Probably not, because you, you can't be asked with that you, effort, can you? And also, and also, I mean, what Fergie... See, the difference is now that it used to be print media. So, and Fergie knew that. And your job, your job was about print. You, you know, you had to get a story. If you couldn't get a story out of United or City, your editor didn't want to know you. And there's a famous story of... Um, Fergie banning Simon Mullock from the Sunday Mirror because uh, he had uh, he had a blue shirt. So uh, and and 
but but what what they don't tell you is is that Fergie was very good to Simon and, and later gave him the story about that, that he was going to retire and so he kind of looked after the journalists but nowadays there's a lot of the newspapers are dying it's all now online because you well, look you look get stories real. out you look get stories out miles before the press what are the journalists doing in that press conference they ask shit questions for the most yeah. part yeah the, the questions that they ask can we ask you about transfers go ahead because i'm not going to answer them you've just wasted a question why do we never see a tactical question we never ask a, a question that's that's genuinely interesting on, on the football side it might as well be tmz reporters that don't even know what football is that are asking these questions but why are they even there because, because united put the press conference out because so we they, know the they, managers they are, they, are put, they are playing to, you gotta remember they are playing to a Manchester United support, a worldwide support of millions and millions. They're not writing for, for the 70 odd thousand who actually go to the game, who actually care. They're talking about about your people in Botswana, China, of course, but why, anywhere like that. Why who, is the individual who, journalist at a press conference though? Because they, they're on YouTube. United put the press conferences on YouTube. Why does a journalist need accreditation to go and ask questions themselves? That's what I don't get. Well, I, just, I mean, it's a, it's a totally media-controlled thing by Manchester United and by the Glazers. And, and as I said earlier on, you'll, I've yet to see a positive story about what Jose is doing with the youth. You know, I, I, I well, could, did, did you I, see I his, um, his, his, um, his Vox Pop that he did after the Bayern Munich game? And he was talking about Jimmy Garner, marking Lewandowski, and yeah. and all, and you know, Demi Mitchell up against uh, whoever he was up against, and and he was smiling and he was gushing and it was brilliant. And I was like, I haven't seen this. I haven't seen this yeah. reported. It was like you know some sort of football Twitter account that posted. I, it. I think what was very interesting and was really good to see was Luke Shaw's interview after the game on Friday when he was talking about not being in condition and having to get himself fit and having to to be positive. But he was also talking about very positive about Jose about the kind of support he's given him. And what Josie did last season was was what he needed. Was gave him a really good kick up the arse. And the same with Pogba. Because it's all right Pogba going to the World Cup, not that France had to really get out of second gear to win it, but um, you know, he, he, what he actually did was, he gave him, you know, he, he said to Pogba, well, if you can do that for France, do it for us. And you know, and maybe the message has got through. You know, I, I don't know, I don't know whether Pogba will be here in a month's time, you know, if his agent's no, got anything either. to do with it, no. And what scares me is if you throw enough money at Woodward and the Glazers, this is they, again, it they, comes back round. If they, it's they will take it. If it's a significant offer, they they would take it. I believe they would take it. And for all the people that just want to scream at Raiola, obviously Raiola's he's a football agent and he's he's one of the best and he's got some significant clients and he's got a bit of a reputation of being a bit of a dick, but. He works for Paul Pogba, not the other way around. So he can't hawk Paul Pogba around Europe unless Paul Pogba's open to the idea. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've got... I mean, I, I think... I'm, I'm not... I don't think I, I, I'm, you know, spilling any secrets if everybody knows that there has been a major falling out with Jose and Pogba. No, we've covered to, it on the To the point that they are virtually not speaking to each other. But there's, there's plenty of times that happens in football clubs. You know where relationships and and you know we we had the the point with Andy Cole and Teddy Sheringham, who you know have been in changing rooms together. Wouldn't wouldn't share it, and yet you know more, we're more than happy to play in a team together. So you, you don't have to be best friends or anything like that. I think yeah, as long as you respect each other as a manager uh, and and as a player, then there isn't a problem. But um, I now think with what Pogba has been playing and in his age, I want to see a season where Pogba dominates and and which he's, he I must admit Friday night. He looked like he, he had a bit of that about him. He, you know, he, he was putting his foot in and he was starting to dominate. I was terrified with that penalty, though. That's the maddest oh. one I've ever seen. I was like... And, and so was he. So especially <laughs> especially since, since Sanchez was the, the, you know... Yeah, you have an argument, you've got to bury it. Designated. And when you start that silly little trotting thing that he says he's always up, but he did, you know, he did bury it. And that's, you know, that's the matter. That's, that's what probably separates the, the, you know, average players from the really great players that he knew... You know, he knew he could do it, so that's good to see. But I really want to, I want to see him. I'm happy to see him as captain. You know, and I'm happy to, um, you know, to 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 see him dominate games and and go on. You know, and and show he can do it at United. I, it was interesting to say that he'd never won a Premier League and he wanted to do that. That was, uh, you know, 
Yeah. He also said, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a leading figure for those in the academy to look up to yeah. wearing the captain's arm. And, and as you touched on earlier before, a lot of the academy prospects that we've had coming through, um, it was great to see. It's great to see Paul uh, Paul Pop wearing the captain's armband. It's great to see Marcus Rashford given the number ten shirt. You know, it's great to see Andreas Pereira given the starting responsibility in a, a Premier League game. Yeah. These are all positive things, like you touched on earlier. That if other clubs was doing them, you'd never hear the end of it. Oh, it's it's fifty percent. Fifty. I'll say that one more time. Fifty percent of every player that's ever played for Manchester United comes from our youth team. Unparalleled. Nowhere comes anywhere near it. October, we, we're looking at the 80th anniversary of the last time that we didn't have an academy do we, player do in the squad. Do we get any credit? No. None at all, because it doesn't suit them, and it certainly doesn't suit uh, the agenda against Jose to say, you know, because it, it's a 16 year old boy that didn't even have his GCSE results on a pre season. When, when he came, oh, that was the end of our youth. Do you remember that? We were, oh, Jose does, doesn't believe in youth, so, so uh, you know, he doesn't improve young players. So, so Lingard, Jesse Lingard, and Marcus being in the England team, does he get any credit for that? No. Or even, so if, even Ashley Young. If they were playing for playing for Pogba, if they were playing, playing for Pochettino, if they were playing for Pochettino, it would be all, oh, you know, England England benefited from from having a manager who develops young players. It's you know it, it's there for everybody to see. I, I I mean I think it's fantastic, and I think the you know the guy's only going to make him play. And as I said to you, I think we're three or four years away from a real. If we can hold them together. A really, really strong team that 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 will come through. But what he needs is the most valuable thing at the moment is is time. And I'm afraid with social media, I I, I, I have my doubts whether he'll get it. Uh, in the same way that I I, I believe if Fergie, if social media had been here when Fergie first started at United, well, there's no way he goes seven chance. years without winning it. Even at a time when we've not we've gone twenty years without winning it, he still doesn't get that time. Uh, no way. I was I was on the United. The, the um, United Road, when um, he left Hughes out of the team, when he first started, and to a man, the United Road sat down <coughs> in protest because uh, people forget, people think, oh, he's disgruntled. That he went through some some very. What was it? He was boring oh. early doors as well, well wasn't he, he? He had a job to do. You came from Ron, who was a free-flowing attacking player. Oh manager, God, heavens above! And, and to a Fergie popular. was dour, yeah. boring, and he, aggressive. He knew, he knew that he, he had to change everything. He brought in. You know, he brought in players that, that were solid and, and he knew what he had to do and he, and he did it and in the same way, but he was allowed to get his place. <laughs> now, if, if, you know, he'd come in and said, well, you know, I want to buy such a player, I want to buy Pallister, I want to buy Bruce and the chairman had said, What about no, Tony Adams? No, you're not having, no, you're <laughs> not, not having, even. you're not having them. <laughs> yeah, no, not even. Not yeah. Having, you've got a, you, 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 you've got a play. Got Vivander some smack with you. Got, yeah, I did. <laughs> Yeah, I remember. You got McGrath, one of the best in the yeah. world. Yeah. Keep him. Well, I, some, would, some would argue that that, that that was true, that McGrath, unfortunately, what he did, Fergie did, was he realised that at the time we had a drinking culture, three of them, Norman, Robbo and, and McGrath, and he decided it was time to get rid. Now, he he knew he could get rid of two, but Robbo, that, his head would have been on a stick somewhere on... Um, uh, I, I think a lot of my generation, because I, I remember Robbo. I'm actually older than what Robbo was when I started watching now. But I remember Robbo was always seen as this old man. Injuries had got to him. Talking like ninety one onwards. Robbo, on. Robbo made promises that his body couldn't keep. Unfortunately, because he didn't care how big you were, he would he would tackle you. To, to, I always say a great. You talk about great players. Um, uh, and I did a book on United's captains, and and people say, well, how do you how do you pick a great captain? I said. If you, if we give him the captaincy on arrival, didn't we? Um, no, because because Ray had it for a bit as well. Wilkins he was virtually shared it on arrival. when he got yeah him and Wilkins. That's still shared weird though because he bit. was he was in his early twenties when we signed. Oh, him. unbelievable! Uh, well, he is the reason. I mean, I'm sure we've discussed this in the past, but uh, Matt Busby resigned from Manchester United board, and a lot of people don't know that. No, oh, yep, and, and Robbo. And he, the reason he did it was because. Well, go grab us. There's a book in there called the Captains. We go were paying. It. We were. We were. We were paying over the, the odds, he thought, paying more than a million pounds for Robbo. But it was, it, was the fa- it was the fact it was any player, wasn't it? Can't pay over a million yeah, pounds for a player. Footballer. And, and uh, <laughs> you know, some, some might agree with, because he was a man who, who'd, who'd created teams. He built three great Manchester United teams. We didn't you sign know? a player from, um, is it 54 to, to after Munich or something along those yeah, lines? Well, or Munich, just before after Munich. Munich we had, we, no, yeah. after Munich we had to. We had to bring in people like Ernie Taylor. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine, like, like, can you imagine nowadays where you're like, I don't worry about it? Well, he... 
he buys he buys he buys um Dennis Law. Fantastic book. <laughs> what, a, what a wonderful How about that? What, what a wonderful tone <laughs> that is. Yeah. Get yourself down to Waterstones and I will throw a link in the description for it because it is a very good book. Uh, but anyway, to go with this, to, to, to go back, I was saying to Steve before, to, to a great captain or a great player is someone who, who defines um, a decade. Yeah. And and well, there's a few of them. For, for some of the youngsters, it's Martin nice. Buchan in the 1970s, who was a Rolls Royce of a footballer, fantastic footballer. Young. Uh, he by the time he, he'd won a, a cup in. Scotland by the time he was 21 he won the FA Cup in Scotland he won the FA Cup over here as a captain I think he still might be the only footballer ever to do that just a, an absolute glorious footballer does then, does Buchan and Robbo suffer the same sort of thing that they are they aren't Busby babes they aren't Busby's all conquering side and they're not not really in the case of Robbo a Fergie era player oh I, I, I think I think Robbo transcends that and I think to anyone of a certain age anybody who saw Manchester United in the, in the 1980s who had to go through those years um, yeah, him, when, when I see him Literally, he, yeah. he, he carried us he carried England as well but he certainly carried Manchester United and there was this feeling that if you if you if you got to Old Trafford and Robbo was playing you felt safe you felt but you felt that didn't safe. happen all the time did it because he was well I still stand by and, and I will and anybody who was there will probably back me up the um, the game against Barcelona yeah, my old man talks about this and, like it didn't, like it's a myth. Oh, yeah, it's just. It was, <laughs> so, for anyone who was there, it still sends shivers. I've never heard Old Trafford like it. It was, it was just. We got there. It, we could still pay on the, the door in those days, and and we were in the ground by half past six, and and in the Stratford end, and it was absolutely shocker, and there was a mist over the ground, and. Hang on, set the scene a bit better because you can do better than that. Oh, so You're an okay. author. You can so, do better than this. So, so we lose to Maradona's. Barcelona. Yeah, Can we just put that in there? Camp Nou. You've, you've heard of that guy, right? Diego Maradona. Yeah, greatest player ever. His, his Barcelona team, we lose. 2 0. And you have to win 3 0 at Old Trafford. Yeah, there impossible. you go. Now you can start. Yeah, yeah impossible. <laughs> so um, we get there and it's a Manchester night and there's a cloud and it's a bit misty. The video and from the day actually looks like it was shot in the dark. Oh, it was. It looks like the, the floodlights at the stadium were terrible. It was, it was absolutely unbelievable. And um, Barcelona walked out. They walked out with the United team, and the noise was fine. And you can if you get to see it, you physically see the look on Maradona's face when he just thinks, "Whoa, just a minute, I wasn't <laughs> quite expecting this." And it was ferocious, absolutely. It, it, it never stopped. It had been going from probably an hour before the game, but it, it got louder and louder. And the man who doesn't get any credit for that game is the guy we signed at the same time as Robert Remy Moses, who just basically followed. Maradona anywhere he went on the pitch and every time he got he just kicked him see Remy Remy is one that I mean I you know, I know about Martin Buchan I know about Gordon Hill I know about Lou Macari um, obviously Charlton Law Best mm. even Kerry um, but Remy Moses is one that I just I know I know he was a beast that's oh, yeah. all I've got yeah. well he came over with he was in the deal with so we never actually knew how much we played for Robbo we, we bought them both as a as I, and I think that's how, how kind of Ron tried to package it so that not without putting too much pro, you know, um, pressure on Robbo but um, yeah his finest game that, that, that Remy ever played for us uh, that was showing that but yeah we needed three and then um, Robbo and Stapleton scored for us Did Robbo score like 10 minutes in 7 minutes oh, in yeah, just, really early doors yeah. so you was, if, that's the lift you need isn't it the oh, crowd's just, on it like and, and, right and we're having just, it now it was crazy and you could see physically you could see the look on the Barcelona players they, they were they looked terrified they looked like sometimes they looked like they got stage fright and these are people who were used to playing in the Camp Nou uh, and, and they had you know Maradona which Rob, let's, Robbo's let's, first celebration I think it's his first he scored two didn't he yeah and gets carried off Carried, yeah, off by on the, carried off by the crowd. Oh, what a night. There's a, there's a scene which, I, obviously, I wasn't at the game. I was one, two <laughs> at the time. Yeah. I know my dad was there. Thanks for that, Steve, for making me feel No problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a, there's a, a clip of Robbo scoring, and he just lets out this, and it's just the energy oh, in him, and gosh. you just think, wow, that is a... He was, I, a I, the only thing I can compare it to was Keane in Turin, which, you know, Fergie says it's the greatest performance he's ever seen from a footballer. Uh, and and you, you, you'd have to go a long way to beat Roy, Roy's performance in Turin, knowing he's not going to play in the final. Still, just and the fact he that just he was, rolled his sleeves up. The it? fact that he was insulted 
that, that when, when someone said, you know, what a performance is, or he wouldn't, he wouldn't try like that, automatically assumed that that's how everyone, and that was a standard he set. And, and Buchan for the 70s, you know, um, Robbo for the 80s, and, and Keane for the 90s are, are players that just completely dominate a decade, you know, as, as you know, Charlton Law and Best did with the 60s. And that's my, you know, how I set my standards for a great player. Are we missing that now? Mm-hmm. But I think we, I think I've answered my own question earlier on. But I think we are missing that now. I Believe don't think it. there's any. Oh, oh, there's, there's nobody that you can stand up in this kind of ilk at the moment at, at all. At, at, at the moment, there isn't anybody. I mean, it's there on a plate for Pogba if he wants it. But uh, it, it's whether Pogba wants to be remembered as a great Manchester United player, or whether he wants whether he, whether he thinks what's my chance of winning the. You know, being world player or European player of the year or, or whatever, or his sponsorship deals. But, but wouldn't it be good Barcelona? for him to do that if he comes, if he becomes the Manchester United captain and wins a Ballon d'Or as Manchester United captain? Because it's doable here. Well, it's doable. We, 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 I don't. There's not many teams that had. We had three European player of the years playing team. for us in one team. You know, so um, at one point, so yeah, of course we've we've done it in the past, and, and it is, but you know, he will have to step up massively from the performances that we got last year where... I think a few of these have been close, actually. I think Robbo was close in the 80s. I can't remember which year. I think Keane's come third. I want to say, like, 2000 or something. I don't think think Eric... Eric came second in 93. Did he? I think so. Let me get the phone. Yeah. Because I was shocked to find that out because I I wasn't aware of that. But I I was doing some research on it and, uh, and I found out that Eric did... I think he came third... Well, let me find it. But it, yeah, he needs to to step up. But 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 we need a leader. And I must admit, I did like, I liked the attitude of Fred. On Friday, I liked. I like. We finally seem to have a player. Third, nineteen ninety three. All right. Roberto Baggio, Dennis Bergkamp, Eric Cantona. The divine ponytail, Baggio, and and well, you can't fault because Bergkamp was. If ever, if sure, ever a player, uh, people forget about Bergkamp when it t- comes to changing the, 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 the style of football in this country, Bergkamp played a massive... That one's a joke. 1999, David Beckham second. I think what happened it, with it the voting it. there, uh, yeah. Rivaldo didn't get out of the group stage. Can you imagine not getting out of the group stage in the Champions League and winning the Ballon d'Or now? Yeah, it's but it's, it's all politics with any uh, Brazilian and, uh, you know, and who you... I also think United's vote would have been spread amongst Keane, York, Stam, well, Schmeichel. There was, that, there, was that ridiculous, there was that ridiculous time when... For the PFA Player of the Year, when Ginola won it, no, no. because we won, we had we had the next three who just split, who just split the vote, and and, and that that you know he, he he got it, and and he didn't have the, he, he wasn't even shamed into into not you know accepting. He accepted it, thinking he deserved it, which <laughs> absolutely stunned me. Thinking out just embarrassment, he would have like passed it on, but but he took it. So yeah, I mean it's down to it, it's down to Paul Pogba, but as I say, I did like what I saw of Fred, you know. I like the aggression because I think we've been lacking. My old man compared him to Keane on Friday night. So there's a bit of Keane about him. Oh, and I went, Jesus Christ, man, oh, that's yeah. dangerous. That's that dangerous is, territory. That, that is, that is, there is a lot. Let's, let's face it, there's a long way to go before, you know, you start. It was and more in the, the fact he was a genuine box to box guy. Well, that, yeah, he gets, I mean, he gets up. And people forget City were very interested in him as well. That doesn't get mentioned. City were looking at him quite seriously. And, and, and I think he's a player. He, he's got an, he's tidy. He doesn't give the ball away. And he, he, what, I, what I did like is he liked to put his foot in. Yeah, he's got which, a bite. Which I, I think, you know, we've been missing for quite some time. I really enjoyed that midfield three. Yeah. I thought I thought the forward three were a little bit off the pace. I thought Marcus looked a little bit off the pace. Uh, my, Could be a, my a, problem with Marcus is, and stuff. is when Marcus came and he first started, it was all natural and there was no pressure. Every time I see Marcus play, I see a player who always thinks, if I don't do something, I won't be playing the next game. And so I've got to try something. And, and there might I be a think, lot of truth to that. I though. think he, yeah, there might be. <laughs> and I think he, he sometimes he tries things that you think to yourself. And, and he's he started doing that thing which frustrates a lot of United fans last year, where he would drop short and play nice little passes while the other team was getting their shape, putting the defence together, and we're making him and Lingard a matter of doing these lovely little triangles, which isn't hurting anybody, mm. you know. And and the guy's got genuine pace. You know, and, and we should be scaring people. And, and with him running, with Jess running, and with Tony Marshall, who you talk about people who could win the, the player of the year. You've got to remember. Uh, I think France, he's finished, though, mate. I think he, I think there's more chance of me and you playing for United no, this I, year. Well, I, I've got to disagree with you, Steve. 
I've you got reckon? his baby. Yeah, and Josie actually made a point. He, he actually made the point of saying he wanted to get him on. Uh, he wanted to get him on, but at the time, you know, he, he couldn't find it. Would have it would have altered the shape of the team too much. I think that um, Anthony Marshall's had his problems off the pitch, which are, are well <laughs> documented, which haven't done you know a lot for for his football. And there's a lot of United supporters will say that there, there's a lot of time he spent with his hands on his hip, hands on his hips, looking up at the skies. You know, and he, he, you know, he needs to, to know that if you're playing in the Jose team, and if you're playing for Manchester United, you've got to work. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got to work hard, and, and there isn't, there's no point scoring a wonder goal against Liverpool, and then going missing for 12 games. You know, we want someone who's doing that. But in France, I've just come back from from spending three weeks in France, and he was he was seen as the real next as, as the successor to, to Henri. He was, you know, the next big thing, and they still believe him. So, and, and I believe in him because I, you know, he, he's got magic feet. You know, and I think he's a hell of a footballer. I just don't think. Um, I think with what's happened with him and Jose, and I think a little bit of the way he's talking, um, I'll, I'll speak to you after. But yeah. there's there's things that have happened in the last week or so where I'll, yeah. be, I'll be shocked if he's here. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I, you know, and, and I'll think. But I, I just think to, my, to myself, I almost think that that Jose does this. He's a fantastic man manager, Jose, and he doesn't get the credit for it. But I think if you if you speak to Luke Shaw. You look at Luke Shaw's attitude towards him, um, and he, he's he. One thing I can guarantee is that he hasn't lost the, the dressing room. He's very popular with the players. A lot of all the, the nonsense that we got over the, the the summer with him saying this and him saying that, he's doing what he always does. Take get the press, make it about me. Fergie used to do it with refs. If if United had a stinking game and they played badly and one of his players made a mess up, he would never talk about the player. He'd say, "Oh, the refs had a nightmare." Uh, you know it's disgraceful the FA must be happy with this because they've done this and, and he's the referee the referee's out of condition and stuff like that and it's the oldest trick in the book and then the, give you give the press the, the I definitely headline. think he lowered the expectation but no one was starting Friday night thinking United A was even going to win there was mm. a lot of people that was on oh, the yeah. fence about that uh, but no one expects Manchester United to put a title challenge in this season on the back of the positivity at Liverpool obviously what's happened yeah. at City they can't do no wrong at the moment Probably quite rightly, um, but no one's even thinking United. I saw a lot of people predicting United fifth, United sixth, yeah. and you think what Jose's done is a lot of people actually thought he was going to win the title last season at the start of the season, myself included. But I always go into that thinking. Yeah, we're the title. no, of course, of course, and I think Jose did. I think, I think, I think, I think the advancement of City from the season before when they'd looked ordinary, okay, when they came ordinary, third, yeah. I, I, I think nobody. The, the, in fact. There isn't anybody in football or anybody out there watching this who predicted it. Nobody predicted City. 100 points. No. Coming come the way that they did and playing the kind of football that they did. And, and There was a huge difference between last season City and the season before City. The season before, yes, they keep a lot of possession, but it's where they hold it. They was holding possession with the centre half and the goalkeeper. That's why Bravo was exposed so badly because they would use him to rotate possession. I still think... They moved it forward I still 10, think, 10 yard, 10, 15 yards. I still think this, and I'm going to be very careful, very careful what I say here, uh, that someone's going to get bitten in the bum at City. I think I think there are things regarding Spanish doctors. Oh my God, alleged. <laughs> alleged Spanish <laughs> doctors, which we've got to be careful. And I don't think it's a coincidence again that a certain Manchester City player went to this magical Spanish doctor who can make people suddenly, faith healer, can make people come back to the dead very quickly. And the Germans decided not to take him to the World Cup because I think the Germans knew that if he got tested, I mean, I, I won't say who that player is or anything like that. I'll let people <laughs> make their minds up. But I also think well, that, got one German player that he was the, 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 um, Bayern Munich tried to ban him from sending his doctor which is the big fallout that Pep. was the fallout that they with, had. Was with this doctor I think there's a, I think Pep falls out at every club he does an interesting thing that we suppress we'll go back to I think the press and, and people will notice will agree with me once I say this and when they start watching is that the first thing Manchester City what's the first thing Manchester City do if they lose possession well they, they chase it down foul hmm. foul quick foul and uh, I was watching it again today and they're doing it against Arsenal if they give away possession what he does to them is, is they, they did it against us last season I, I noticed it they'll put a, a little slight tackle in not, nothing that's going to get you in the book but it's 
foul, foul, foul. Well, Chelsea and Makaleli was uh, called a Makaleli role, the Makaleli foul even. Yeah. As across in the halfway line, just lift someone. Yeah. It's not. It's not generally a yellow card. Yeah. It's not a dangerous free kick to give, but you reset. Yeah. yeah, because yeah, they have a very high line. That is how you get behind them, and that is how Liverpool are able to overcome a lot of the time because they can move it forward extremely fast, and that's why they've had such success against Pep's City team. I think yeah. more teams will have success. I, I, I still think they win the league, and probably comfortably. But I think more teams I've are going to find about. Let me put my let me put my cards on the table. I think I think we'll we, we will challenge. I wouldn't be if we won it. I wouldn't be surprised. Can you imagine how big the party's going to be oh, if we win it this year. It's, it's the the press would hate it. Because they're their messiah. I'd be unbearable. Their, their messiah would be, be <laughs> but but given that I'm not buying any fireworks. I'll quite, happily, so put, I'll quite happily put my cards on the table and say I'll take City winning it all the time if it stops those clowns from down the M62. Because to see them roll past thirty would would be great. And anybody who says well I shouldn't be concerned, like like the boss said, you know, he he was there to knock them right off their uh, perch and he did it. And we keep them off their perch. The nightmare scenario is that City win the Champions League and Liverpool in the Premier League, in it? Can you imagine? I'm going to hold oh, that just, week well, if, I, if that's going to happen. It, let's face it. You know, I, I, I had that, that, that fear. You know, we had that fear of them winning the Champions League and them being completely unbearable. And then, then Gary, Gareth Bale, you know, showed, showed them up for being the frauds. I don't mean the scousers. I mean the frauds. I mean, City, I mean, City winning the Champions League, Liverpool winning. Here's the a league. question for you: <laughs> Do, would, would any other club, any other club in Europe, get away with? The way that they behaved towards Manchester City, with the coach. You know, if that had happened in Turkey, we would be screaming for the for the club to be thrown out of Europe and banned. Where the police actually gave the route of the city. The city changed the coach route for those, and the police gave the route out to the supporters, the Liverpool supporters, because they knew that they wanted to. I'm get jealous of it on Monando. I'm jealous that United don't have that sort of supporter activation. We are so fractured as a supporter base that that we couldn't come together to organise for a call like that. But but. <laughs> That's got a lot to do with success, and if and if Liverpool suddenly get success, their fans get watered down with people who suddenly want to want to join and families who want to go. As it is, you you talk to anybody who was watching United in the seventies and eighties, and we were there. That that was us. You know, we would go to to Anfield, and and we would be fantastic. Our support was always fantastic, but we weren't winning anything. That's because you had a hardcore supporters. Well, what you get now, what you get. I much prefer what the Scousers did with the coach. That. As a as a, a welcome to a city team arriving, than the way the city manufactured plastic bullshit when they all get off the coach with the, the guys <laughs> shouting the names and stuff like that. And you just yeah. think, well, what is this? I mean, that's shit? fantastic. The great thing about city is is that no matter how bad you're feeling, <laughs> is it like with them winning the league, and then you saw that fantastic video. If anybody's not seen it, watch City's video about we won the cup. Have you seen it? It's is this the one where they've got the guys drinking water in the pub it's and stuff? It's just the most embarrassing thing you'll ever... And some of the City supporters must have just been absolutely dying of embarrassment. So, but I'm, I'm sure, I, you know, I'm sure they'll take it. You know, as as with us, you know, we take we take a win in the league no matter how we played football. Then all the criticism of Jose would disappear and stuff like that. So, but yeah, if if it's a choice between. Um, City and Liverpool winning it. It's got to be City because City don't matter to me. They, they, they seriously don't. And I know if there's if any. Uh, you I just want to keep fans. the name off that Champions League. Um, I, honestly, they don't. They just don't matter to like me. They're still boycotting it. Uh, exactly. I mean, they're not. They've just got a shite fan yeah, base. Yeah, not boycotting it. You know, um, I, 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 it's it's an interesting thing to see whether they actually will. Because he, he went to Bayern Munich, took Pep on for the very reason of him winning the Champions League, and he wasn't he wasn't able to do it. As Champions League winners. Yeah, you know, and, and here's a there was a manager who's only ever managed the best clubs in the league with the most money. You know, he's he's always been able to buy whatever players does. I would, I, I certainly will think a lot more about him if he went to a club like Spurs or a little bit lower down, you know, and did it with a club where he didn't have an open chatbook. It'd be interesting to see then. You know what he did. I wonder when the, the, the party's over here with him at six. He didn't want uh, The reservations I had about him, I didn't think he was that good with his signings. I think he's improved at City with his signings. But the best players at City are still players that was there prior to him coming. You can't give him the credit for. But I wonder at what point does he get bored? Because for me, if Ryan Giggs had a, obviously came through Manchester United Academy, won it all as a player, became the manager, won two trebles. And then bounced. I don't know how I'd feel about that. I'd, yeah. I'd question a guy's stomach for that because yeah. you would hope, as a Barcelona fan, 
this guy now needs to go and do a 20 year well, legacy. The guy who took over from it, Barcelona, there's a lot of arguments that he actually took them on. I think he got a higher points total. Yeah. I think he, he only won one treble, I think, but I think he um, got a higher points total. I think, I, I, I think what, is, what is conveniently forgotten about by the media and by City supporters is that City have the best academy. Probably the best. I would argue with, with probably the best academy in Europe. Um, they've got Chelsea's uh, up there with them. Yeah, Ch no, Chelsea, Chelsea are different. Chelsea are physically, physically a very, very big team. They've always done that power thing. But talking to some of the guys from um, City's academy, they were talking about how Barcelona are after some of their players. But if you're a young player and you're at Manchester City, Phil Foden being the perfect example, let's, let's have no bones about it. Phil Foden is a great footballer. Good, good. Good football, and, and we shouldn't be blind to it just because he plays for City and start with this nonsense about. Jaden exactly. Sancho, I'd said for a long time, Jaden it's, Sancho was one of the most exciting players oh, I've ever seen. Now, now, if you're Foden and you see them going by Mares, and you've got De Bruyne, Silva, I think, where are you going to? And if that was at United, if if, if just for example, if Jose had done that. You know, and blocked, when, our, blocked um, our youth, he would have got... Crucified. When we signed Falcao and let Danny Welbeck go to uh, Arsenal, I remember the articles that United had turned their back on our traditions, yeah. that Louis van Gaal had, had ended United's run and how soon would it be that this youth record disappears and things like yeah. that. That was yeah. all there. Yeah, and, 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 and it's, it's carrying on, but, but once again, so, you know, and it's very important that, that supporters see past the media because, as you're saying... There's, there's, there's a lot of Manchester United supporters who don't get to the game. They don't really know what's going on. And their, their, their total take on Manchester United is all through social media and through the printed media. And so if they, the social media keeps saying to them, everybody hates Jose, and everybody hates this and stuff like that, then they're going to say, all right, I'm supposed to I was feeling very good on Friday. Right. Big up to the uh, the Red Army guys that had uh, yes. boxed off that in the bottom of J stand. Yeah, well, do you not think there was that thing of which United specialise and Fergie used to love more than anything, it's them against us. And once it gets that, once you get that, it's them against, it's them against us, you get that kind of, well, we're Manchester United, we'll show you. And, and, and the way we started, you thought to yourself, this is going to be, yeah. it's going to be fantastic. We might have scored too early. Yeah, well, 77 it's, seconds it's, uh, in yeah. us, whatever it was. Yeah, I don't really, I, I, was, I, I was just happy to, to, to see us with a lead because, um, you know, we very rarely lose. Well, uh, Jose very rarely lose, but as Manchester United, we very rarely lose. Uh, you know, when when we get a lead, and uh, Do you know what I mean, I and people should also remember that we beat every team last season, which once another another fact that that, that is is forgotten. So there's a, lot a of, there's a lot of positivity which has been lost over the summer, and some of it is uh, like like say I think Jose as soon as he knew because he knew, I think Jose knew about eight weeks ago maybe longer that he wasn't getting the money and the players weren't coming in and we, as with Jose as you stated he won't go quietly mm. he, he will no I think if he, he goes he's burning he, the house he, down oh, on his way out he, yeah, yeah he takes bodies with him and his press conferences January is going to be very interesting if we if we haven't got a sporting director I think we'll have a sporting director by then a football in director and let's hope he's a good one because if we haven't and we don't get players then I think uh, it will go absolutely crazy and, and, and drop the so I think I think you, you've hit the nail on the head when you said he lowered expectations and I think he was doing it for a very good reason because he was he doesn't want to be judged on this team because mm. he, he always said pe judge people after three years because he thought by the end three years he would yeah. have his players in and we would be playing his style and, and I don't think in his head he still thought we'd have Valencia Jones Small I don't think anybody's had we thought that that's a possible back four uh, for us this season no <sighs> Uh, you know, and and but the young po the young uh, Portuguese lad that we bought, I've only heard great things. Well, the great the thing is, a lot him. of people are bigging this guy up that he's going to yeah. come in and do something, but he's less experienced than Fosu Mensah, and he keeps binning him off. I, a lot. I, I don't. <laughs> Me and you have had this conversation in the past. I thought I'd um, love him, man. The the uh, Sani, when Sani was interviewed about last season, he won the PFA. <laughs> Young player of the year, and they said, yeah, he said "Who's the toughest player you played against?" And he, he, he name checks, you know, Tim Fo and, and says, "You know, who's great there? He's physically great. You know, he gets it. He gets the club. He gets supporters." And this man has a box of frogs. Oh He's off his yeah, mother. and for oh, some reason, time for that. For some reason, Damien. And I, I, I will, if, if Damien's Italian, 
I've seen Italian defenders, <laughs> and if Darwin's an Italian defender, I'll show my ass. <laughs> uh, because I, I, you know, and you think, well, how can we have a World Cup without without Italy? And, and then you realise he's getting in the Italian side, and then you realise why we're not. Because <laughs> you know, I don't think annoy which annoys me most the, the fact of when players go passive or that pathetic attempt to grow sideboards, which where hey, like a little patch. Tell you what, mate, he had a shot the other day. He's coming for Marcelo's. Role. Yes, yeah, he did have that shot straight at the keeper, but oh <laughs> my god, the it time that the time that they were just—I mean, Leicester were just going down the left, left, weren't they? All the time because they knew. They I can really passing. see where a William in that role that matters in now would really benefit United if we had another fullback that could also attack as well. So I was chatting to someone on Friday. Yeah. Um, obviously, when I watched the 18s, and I love watching the 18s for the innocence of it. Win, lose, draw. Yeah. Did we enjoy the game? Yeah. That's yeah. all I really care about. Yeah. There's a competitive element. You want to see them win. It's disappointing the way they've come out of the Youth Cup a couple of times. But when I go and watch the 18s and I speak to um, some of the old heads there, because there's some real old heads that go and watch the 18s, and I love talking to them. Yeah. Um, and you, you say to them, like, watching United in the 50s and 60s, because we only won a handful of titles in, in yeah. that time with the incredible sides that we had. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, yeah, we had a little little problem in the, the end of the we, we the did 50s, which stopped us dominating I think in the way that, that Madrid did I think we, we, we had that, that that possibility but even Chelsea, even, even football at the time you know there was great managers that lasted 10-15 years and they might have won a title or two and, and that was enough and I, I get I get a bit of a satisfaction of going watching the 18s out of watching them lads them lads and are they better than last week are they doing yeah. things are they experimenting are they trying things and and that's lost from Premier League 2018 football. Yeah. In a, it reminds me of, when I go and watch the 18s, it reminds me of me watching football as a kid. Yeah. Oh, where, yeah. Where I like them to win, I like to see goals, but if we don't win, it doesn't do you, kill the world where you, people know it's nuts, isn't it? Do you see a style of football? In the 18s at the moment, they weren't great, actually, on uh, new manager, Neil Ryan. Yeah. Well, um, you, don't, you don't see, like, a, a, a blueprint following down the club a certain style that they no, all no, there was, a certain uh, style oh my god they had a terrible defence last season yeah. which definitely isn't coming from Jose well, I, I think and free flowing attack see, I mean, Jose got a lot of stick when he talks about the under 23s but they got relegated they did and I think he need, he know, knows that, that some of them need to wake up <laughs> and realise that 23s you know, is a horrible thing United yeah. again voted against it like the early window yeah. voted against it going to 23s because if you're 22 and 23 still at United and not playing first team well I got news for you my friend you ain't making it if yeah. you're knocking on the door of 2021 20, th there's very few players that haven't made a debut at 22 yeah, that are going to make I still think if you've, if you've stayed at United till 22 or 23 you're getting, a, you're getting a career in football it might not be at United but you're still oh, you're going to, league one league you're two you're going to make a living and, and you know, as we were discussing before filming, in 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 leagues out of the Premier League, you're still getting serious, yeah, a lot of cash, serious, serious, a lot money, of cash. You know, and and uh, you know, and good luck to them. But I I, I was interested because I, I you know I, I do tend to uh, check up with you on on the kids and how they're doing, and, and I was interested to see whether you could see any kind of style. Would you say that they're as negative as the uh, the first team or uh, not yet or free flowing? Last year they were very free flowing under McKenna, which is why I'm excited about what McKenna might be able to do. Yeah, I don't know if McKenna's got like a probation yeah. uh, period under Jose, where Jose goes, here's the things I need you to learn, and then he's allowed to take training, allowed to do one-on-one -on -one yeah. stuff. People that I'm talking to around the club um, are, are suggesting that, um, let's say Marcus Rashford, for example, really looking forward to to the one-on-one -on -one work McKenna's going to do with yeah. him on the technical front. I'm excited about that kind of thing. I think it's going to take five or six months to really see mm. the benefit for it. Uh, we had Tony Strudwick in here last week. Uh, brilliant. Um, he only wanted, Fergie only wanted pre-season to put United in a position to win the first game. Yeah. I find that I find that really really interesting. And and he said all we had to. We've all heard the phrases. We've all heard the, the cliches, the lines. I want to be in touching distance at Christmas. That was Fergie's yeah. uh, remit. So all he had to do was have the players ready for that first game. To just win that first game, not in tip-top condition to last the season, and then they used to do a mini pre-season after Christmas, and that would kick us on to the end of the season. An interesting fact I found out about Fergie, which I didn't realise, and I had no idea, was how far ahead he was with psychologists in sport. I had no idea, and I spoke to the guy, oh, Bill Bezik, who was a psychologist at United, and he was telling me about how Fergie had him in, and what he used to do with players was he used to picture the, picture yourself before they went out, before every game. He would say to them, 
picture picture yourself and and you've you, you've won the game how does it feel to come back in and even the Tottenham game the famous Tottenham game where you know we're three 0 down and we come back to win it five three he, had, he rather than he doesn't rant at them half time he gets the psychologist in and he's he's speaking to them about how is it going to feel you've scored the winner you know picture that and they all had to close their eyes and you're thinking these footballers surely you know and, and yet the, the part he played and I had no idea you think I, I always thought it was Fergie would go in and he would be do all this ranting and stuff like that and and from speaking to a couple of players and everything like that it was real says didn't he goes very quiet he goes you couldn't um you couldn't you couldn't pin him down he goes you'd go in go he's gonna lift us off yeah. the floor in here he'd go in and he'd be telling you about his racehorses that yeah. how they were doing this weekend and you're like what is he on about? We are losing. Like sometimes you'd go in one nil up, two nil up, and he tear strips off you, and you're yeah. like, Jesus Christ, we're playing really well here. He goes, you just couldn't get a beat on him. Uh, we had Alex Stepney in uh, oh. last month. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, these these videos don't really do big views, but yeah. they're brilliant. Like, I oh. love I love talking to Stepney. I, I yeah, think he's yeah. an absolute diamond. Yeah. Um, and he said. We're down in the burn about. It's the European Cup semi final. It's ten years post Munich. I can't even imagine. The emotion must have been touchable yeah. in the air in the dressing room. You're losing in the burn about. And Matt Busby, he goes, he sat there smoking his pipe. He goes for half time. He goes, and it's in silence, and people are like looking at the floor. He goes, there's the occasional cough, and yeah. he goes, and then the buzzer goes, and you're like, oh, he's going to say something now. And he got up. And he goes, he just started laughing. And he goes, you lot are a good football team. You haven't played football. He's like, get out of there and go and play football. Yeah. And you're like, give the ball to George. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. The man management from those oh. two at those times, like phew. absolutely, you know, absolutely fantastic. And uh, you know, but I, I, I do wonder how, how you because I hear nonsense like, oh, you know, Sir Alex would have won the league last year with that team, and and surely people must forget that we didn't. He didn't win the win. <laughs> he didn't win the league. Every time he came back, he always knew how to come back. But there were times when you know teams like Arsenal look oh, like they the, were the Arsenal and the two Chelsea sides. Look, I, at, I, look at '98. Anybody who wants to see? Look at 1998, the year before the treble, when Arsenal dominate the league. Well, in hindsight, though, they, they, they we lost double. him and we lost him. Yeah, Keenan Cantona. You take them out of any United side, and you've yeah. got a difference. Yeah. And if you look at the titles that we lost, most of them we lost by a point. Yeah. Which is nuts to think that we lost four or five titles by a point and an extra point. Like yeah. the one we drew with City, yeah. the one with Chelsea, all of these games, like the the night five one we lose oh, by. And I tell you what doesn't point. get any credit is that team of two thousand and eight. <sighs> now when we, we reached it's, it's the we, best we, we reached team. three three European finals in is it four or five years? In four years. Four years. And if you remember the, the, and, and the Bayern playing, Munich game, we're playing we against, should have been in four. We're playing against the greatest Barcelona team there's ever been. We should have we should have got through Bayern Munich. I think it was Rooney screws up for the uh, for the goal away in the mm. away leg. Yeah, and then he was injured and should have come off, but apparently it went off in the dressing room at half time and they forgot to take Rooney off and they forgot to take Raphael off who just got booked on the stroke of half time. Yeah, and then he goes out and gets sent off in the second yeah. half. But you think we was good enough? I mean, especially Nani in that first half was unbelievable. Oh. this is a United team that's going to another cup final, another yeah. European, and it would have been four European cup finals in four years. And you yeah. don't know if winning it in in ten might have give us the umph in eleven. Yes. Like, yeah, but you it, never know. It was, uh, yeah. So so, but I, I still think that that to go back to the start of our conversation, to to for him to have to deal with the restrictions that that Jose is actually. Jose is actually at at the moment. I, you know, I think that anyone would struggle, and I think he's doing a, a great job. I'm sorry if it's not, you know, the free flowing football. But the style of play of, comes secondary to success in terms well, of he was on the pitch. He was in. He's always been a winner, Jose. You know what you're getting with Jose. He comes to win. He doesn't come to entertain. He doesn't want to be the fans' favourite. He doesn't want to be the media's favourite. I, I have an issue with that. Person. He keeps the fans at arm's length, and I think his his job would be easier if he changed his his attitude on that. But I, maybe I just have to think. I that think he's too been, romantic. I think he's been at enough clubs to realise that how fickle supporters are, and that knows that you know if you know how Chelsea turned on him. And everything like that, and he thinks, you know, I think he thinks it's a job, you know. And, and uh, will I, like, as you say, will I be here next year? I've got a job to do. My job isn't to be, you know. We, we had the. Do you remember the, the embarrassing situation when we had a pissed up Louis Van Gaal at the Christmas do? 
Oh my God! And and people were saying, "Fan, oh, he's a, what a what a what a fantastic what a top man, what a top man." The guy was a clown and, and pissed <laughs> off at, at the Christmas do, and we, we weren't winning games. But Slapping the shit out of Ryan Giggs. Oh, just <laughs> for an absolute idiot! And uh, and and so like, and you've got that, you know, you've got that clown at Liverpool, you know, who just laughs at everything, and and, and you know the, the the press love him, and and if United want that, you know, if you want somebody who's who's going to stand around, turn into crowd, tell him to cheer, but doesn't win anything. Fine, fine, but, but you know, here's a here's a guy who's already given us a European, which just completely gets forgotten about. Nobody even talks about it. He's given us a European trophy. He gave us a you know another trophy. And last year we finished second, but he took us to a, an FA Cup. Now we didn't turn up, but we're not the first United team that hasn't turned up in finals. Well, how many how many FA Cups did Fergie win this time? Not enough, clearly. Yeah, he we won had, a few in the night. Yeah, but then we against Arsenal, where Arsenal didn't have a shot. Yeah. They took us to penalties, yeah. you know, and, and, and just won it on That's penalties. 2005, we, you know, we had, you know, we had the Everton one, the Dogs of War, when we just lost the lost the league, and and you know, we, we scores at the bar and things like that. So, you know, I I, I think uh, you know Fergie did well in the FA Cup, but but you know we've had the FA Cup, so we've had finals where we've just not turned up because it happens on the day, and stuff like. That. But the way he got he gets judged by that, so. Right, let's wrap yes. it up there. But Simon, again, as absolute pleasure, mate. Thank yeah. you for coming. Uh, go check his book out as well. Um, not the first one you've written, is it? You've got and, and a, you've now got quite a few. as well. Yeah. So I'll throw a link to his uh, bio on Amazon or in the description. I definitely recommend checking him out. This one's my favourite. Um, Simon, once again, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we've got loads of content coming out for the rest of this week. Um, definitely make sure you stick around and check out the director of football one because I think loads of people are interested yeah. in that one. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Later.